Good morning. Welcome to St. Teresa of Avila Parish. As we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, let's all stand and join in singing our opening song, We Are Called. same times challenges us to follow his way. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God, you are the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word of flesh that dwells among us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us with the help of the Spirit to the gifts of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life.
reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us, for power whenever you will attend us. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good hope, good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable of the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field, and while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. At harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first gather the weeds and then tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Question one, how could God be lenient and patient with weeds, with us? And it's actually because God is powerful that God can decide to be lenient. Like a Cadillac in power, but a Volkswagen engine and determination to get his way. Each of us could be a little more lenient as well with the weeds that are in others and the weeds that are in us. Maybe follow the example of God, draw on the strength. The Gospel today continues from last week, the sowing of seeds, the parable of the sower. Divine wisdom, now present in Jesus, continues to teach anyone who would listen. So he is speaking about God, the householder, who only sows good seed. And he is trying to explain why is there mixed results. And I think the parable makes two points. Firstly, that an enemy is responsible for the weeds, not God. Secondly, the householder will deal with weeds at the end. With many of the complex issues that we see, and I'm not just talking politically, I'm talking about things in church, our daily life, our family issues, COVID-19, all the different things that we face, it's sometimes very difficult to discern weeds from wheat. On the two issues named, uh, that we could name in our hearts, a good people of faith here gathered can hold different viewpoints on what we should do, what the government could do, what the church should do, what our family should do. And maybe that's quite okay. The parable seems to suggest that the servants need to live with the weed and the wheat. Leave the task of judgment of criticism to God. Jesus offers a teaching to console and encourage his followers. His task, their task as servants, us, is to sow goodness, 
The task of destroying evil is God's, not ours. What brings us to question two. Should I spend more time examining the weeds that are in others? Or should I spend the time searching for weeds that might exist in me? If God is going to take care of the weeds at harvest time, the greatest challenge is to realize that the parable speaks about weeds and weeds in me. Like that plank in my own eye that I have to remove before I take care of the splinter in my neighbor's eye. The paradox with my own life is that I too have to learn to live with wheat and acknowledge the goodness that is within me, within my own heart, my intentions. And this requires from my strength a leniency in accepting the defects and a determination to sow good seed, a willingness to identify a weed from so many sheaves of wheat. I always remember a story by Father Tony DeMello. He was one who did was great in telling spiritual stories. But he had a minister walk into a classroom and, and said to the students that were there, all right, if everyone who chose to be good wore white clothing and everyone who chose to be bad chose black clothing to wear, what would you choose? And the first girl that spoke up said, polka dots, the polka dots, accepting both. But for all our good intentions and efforts, we'll probably continue to struggle with some issues all of our life. It's interesting that we can name the defects in ourselves, but they don't just go away by naming them. It's like we keep working with them. You can think of so many simple things. The garden of our soul will always need a little weeding, and at least an acknowledgement that these defects are within us. That's the beginning of a great acknowledgement of the children of God. So they continue to call us to conversion, and we will continue to need to call on God to allow him to be the gardener of our souls. May we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The people of prayer, we bring our intercessions, the concerns we have, for ourselves and for our family, we offer them. That the people of God may continue to grow in faith and holiness through the power of God's word and the sacraments, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our military, police, and firefighters, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the pastoral region of St. Teresa and St. William. May we continue to grow in strength as a community to better serve the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's patience and kindness may enrich and inspire the love we share within our families and communities. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may soon feast at the heavenly banquet of our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Judy Deverin, whose funeral mass will be Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Charles and Carol Reddick, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer these through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine work of human hand, it will become our spiritual drink. My sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offering of the law, except we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortals with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ. And through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty. They rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. With Francis, our Pope, Dennis, and Joseph, our bishops, your clergy, and all your sons and daughters. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We remember the many who have died from COVID-19 men and women who died in the service of our country, men and women who died in the service of the gospel, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with St. Teresa and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Rule him with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us be a sign of God's peace to one another. with love. 
graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. One announcement. We're in need of volunteers to help at Bingo one Tuesday per month. There are quite a few different areas to help with. Please call the parish office if you can help. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go with God's love and peace. Thanks be to God.